just lock that up. Mrs. P's upstairs, nice little vintage mower. She's upstairs. Ah, it's time to sneak this one in. Ah. Oh, I see. Oh, hello. I thought I wouldn't see you, didn't I? I thought you was upstairs. Out the window. Oh. That right back where you got it from. This has been here from day one. No, it's... It hasn't. I count those mowers up. I can see where it's come from. It's can't be serious. Can't make me take it back. I've paid money for this. But I'll put it in the van and get it out tomorrow when she's at work. That'd be easier. Well, that's me in the old doghouse. Never mind. I'll have to find another way of sneaking my mowers in. Hello, I'm Mixed Mowers and Mower Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to look at this rather nice little vintage bit of kit that I picked up, which has a bit of a twist to it. Um, but before we get on, I did receive. Um, off of my Amazon wish list, a nice set of um, cable ties. There's about 15 different sizes in here. Absolutely brilliant. And they came from a man, Alan Jones. Alan Jones, thank you very much indeed. I believe I helped him out via email. He had a question for me and we went to and fro on the question. I hope I have helped him out. As a, as a little thank you, he then responded and sent me a rather nice gift off my Amazon wish list. That's cool. And somebody also sent me, now I do remember having having conversation with this person, but I can't remember the name. I can't find it with his email, Instagram, uh, YouTube, I can't remember. But somebody has sent me a rather nice set of Nipex 26200 um, long nose, little nose pliers, and they're really, really nice. My old set I've got here, as you can see, they've been mixed mowed. Uh, they've got carburetor to clean them on them, and all, all, the, all the handles all gone really, really hard and what have you. Just handles fall apart. So they're still a good pair of pliers, uh, uh, long nose pliers, but... I need to get some more some more handles for them, so that's what I need to do for them. But someone sent me over a very, very nice set of Nipex needle nose pliers. They're lush, they are, so they go with my needle neck snippers, so they're cool. If that was you, send me a little text in the, a little comment in the comment section below. I want to say thank you very much. I can't remember who you were. Really, really, I can't. So that's that. Um, so this little lawnmower, there's a story behind this. Um, I follow a YouTube channel called Lawnmower Jones. There he is just there, okay? He's not got very many subscribers, but he's bang into his vintage stuff. So he's in the Lawnmower Club as well. If you want to see some real old, real, real old vintage, real mowers and what have you, go and check the man out, Lawnmower Jones. Go and check him out and let him know that Mixed Mowers has sent you. Go and say hello and say, Mixed Mowers says, you're pretty good at your vintage stuff. I want to see your channel. So go and ring his, um, his bell and his, and, his, and his subscribe button. Go and check him out. Um, and uh, go from there. So this mower I watched on a YouTube channel, okay? And I thought, oh, I've got to get me one of them, they're lush. Um, you, ju you just don't see them. They come with a bag on the back as well, but mine doesn't have a bag, but I'm hoping to get a bag made up. Uh, they're not particularly hard to make a bag for them, so I'm gonna make a bag up if I can. Um, so I, I was watching this lawnmower, then I done a part one and two, I think, and a carburetor clean on it. Um, so I know it's been fully serviced, brand new spark plug, Carburetor has been cleaned. He's actually cleaned the points up. He's put a new condenser in. Uh, I think he may have put a new pull cord in because that doesn't look standard. Um, he's gone through the entire machine. He didn't. He didn't clean. Didn't tidy the cylinder up. But that's neither here nor there. It is vintage. I'm not worried about that. Um, but he's, he's changed exhaust as well for the original exhaust. It actually had a, a later exhaust on it. But this is the um, the Suffolk Cooperation Mark II. They did a Mark One. And then they did another one called a Squire mower as well. And they also did one for export as well. So they had a, a collapsible handle. And that was called, that, that was mainly for the American market, I believe. And that was called a real mow. And it had real mow written on the side of it. I know Toro did them and other companies did them a bit later on. And they would have had the Briggs and Stratton engine on there. But this comes with the Suffolk Iron Foundry Iron Horse engine on there, which is which is a, a, a British made company. Uh, no longer no longer in use, but this is a cracking little engine for what they are. And this the, the engines are still widely common on the um Suffolk punches and the, and the Colts and that sort of thing. But this is near enough, near enough as it should be. There are one or two little differentials um that you can get options for if you can find the parts. Um, but my man Lawmower Jones, he did a video on this. A week later, I saw a mower very, very similar to this on eBay. And he was asking good, strong money for it, um, but it was fair, it was a fair price. And I made him an offer, he didn't get back to me, so I thought, do you know what, time's running out, um, 
anyone that knows anything about mowers, especially vintage mowers, if they see this, they're gonna whip it up. And this is the first one I've seen on eBay. I've never seen them on eBay, not in my area anyway. Um, so I thought, I'm paying for it, I'm having it. So I paid, I paid him a good money for it and uh, we arranged to pick it up. He's very, very accommodating. He actually runs a lawnmower shop over just the back end of Chichester, near Fundington. And uh, I went to pick it up, but whilst I was looking at the photograph, I thought, that looks like I've seen that mower before somewhere. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've seen that mower before. So I started to do a bit of investigation and I actually found uh, his Mark I video. That wasn't it. I found his Mark II video and I thought, man, that looks suspiciously like that mower down to the T, you know, you know when you, put, you think that's the one, but if they're all original, it's very hard to tell. As it turns out, it is it. So I've just bought a lawnmower off of a lawnmower uh, repair shop dealer or, or shop shop repairer, who's also a YouTuber, who's already done a video on this machine and done, done it for me. So I've got to do no work on it. it. I've seen it running, it all runs. So I've got nothing to do. Lovely. So this machine, it will be fully restored. I'm gonna take it all apart, bits and bobs, and um, I'm gonna find a nice a nice Suffolk orange um, to do it, and I'm gonna completely do the whole lot. It even comes down to, I'll show you in detail in a bit, but it even comes down to little tiny wheel hubs that comes with it as well, which are all original. There's nothing on here that I can see, not even one nut and bolt. There's nothing on here that I can see that doesn't belong. Because the man lawnmower Jones, he likes to keep things as original as he possibly can. The rollers are a little tiny bit worn, but it's not the end of the world. And these were predominantly used for rough cutting, for meadow cutting. So these aren't designed to um, to really, really cut your uh, your grass really down low. These are more of a meadow. There is a height adjustment on the back here, but the height adjustment will only really set the height of roller. It won't actually set the height of cut as far as I'm aware. There isn't actually, from what I know, from what I can see, a height adjustment to, to, to change the height of the wheel. Um, so you can cut that. So these are like a fixed height. They do they do leave a back slightly, but yeah, the, these are a meadow cylinder mower. So um, you can tell that because the roller is actually at the back and not at the front. So it rolls after it's cut rather than before it cuts. So that's cool. Um, so let's have a little let's have a little look around it. See what you think. Um, I've got not a lot to say about it because uh, it's already been done. The, the, the my man Lawnmower Jones, go and check him out has already done it. And he's got loads of vintage stuff on his channel, so it's right up my street. But he's only got a little tiny handful of subscribers. So can we get him up to 100 subscribers, guys? Up to 100 subscribers and over, that'd be absolutely fantastic, so. So that's cool. So if you like the little video of Mixed Mother and Mother Man, um, on this little tiny um, Suffolk Corporation, let's have a little walk, walk around it. Don't forget to hit your subscribe button, or whack the old bell, sit notifications to all, and that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's check out the Suffolk Corporation Mark II. Right, so up on the bench, Suffolk Corporation Mark II um, mower. Um, as I say, bought off of a YouTuber, so absolutely surprised uh, to see it on, on eBay, and it's been uh, sold to me by a lawnmower repair guy, so he's done it all. I've got, I've got, I've got no work to do on it. Absolutely loving that. Um, there's a little spark plug there, a brand new spark plug. There's a kill switch, so you just, you just tap it over just to stop your engine. Um, on some machines, you be a bit careful because if you do that and do that, you get a little tiny belt off of it, so I go a bit careful there. Centrifugal clutch as well, so when the machine's in idle, it'll just idle up. But the second you um, you put the revs up, the clutch kicks in, the blades start to spin, and this is also self propelled as well, so the, the wheels are driven, so you haven't got to push it either. So that's cool. 1960s self propelled mower, lovely. Um, centrifugal clutch, so I think this has got a knock knock on it as well, so if you hit something, it will jump back, so you don't actually damage the machine. That's cool. Um, later dipstick in here as well, um, so you can actually read uh, the dipstick um, off of a little tiny um, split pin there, which is all, all marked up, and as you can see, yeah, all up lovely. So that's good. Um, standard fuel tank for this sort of this sort of um, lawnmower, which is the, 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 the tear shaped one, if you like. The earlier one came with a, uh, a square type one. The recoil system, it has gotten on here. Some of the, um, the earlier Squire ones didn't have a recoil, just had a cup in there. 
and uh, this is a late one which has got, not got the Suffolk logo on here okay that's so you can sort of tell it's a bit later and also around the other side here you generally had a little tiny Suffolk emblem just uh, around about here as well uh, so this is definitely a late one so it's definitely 1960s upwards um, lovely little wheels on this machine <coughs> so there you go it says Suffolk Cooperation, absolutely lovely. Made in jolly old England. That's nice. It comes with a set of wheel trims as well. Check out, check out my rims, baby. Little set of rims on there. There's no chance we put them, them back on one-handed. Um, but it's got a little tiny split pin on there. It's a bit and a grease point as well, which is nice to see. They just fit in the two little tiny holes, and you just, you just got to push them in. But I can't. I don't think I can do it one-handed because they, they are a bit fiddly. So I'll leave that off for now. Um, so that's cool. Lovely little Zenith Carby on the back of here. That's all been cleaned, all been done. I ain't got to touch it. Um, only difference is on these models, um, this has got the later uh, air box on it. Some of the other um, Zenith Carbys had a little tiny um, 90 degree right angle on them, which allowed the air filter to be, to be out the side because as the grass flicks up, it, it, there's a tendency to, to get the grass up in here. So I will, I will be looking for an extension 90 degree pipe on there. You can get them, well, if you can find them. So if anyone's got a little 90 degree Zenith, uh, let us know, that'd be handy. I would like to put that on there. Uh, he's also put, um, there's a nice little tap on there, a nice little vintage tap, which is nice to see, a little brass tap. Uh, the original exhaust, or the, about as original as you can get, uh, it had a different exhaust on there, which he, uh, which he changed. Grease port there as well, lovely to see. Um, that's where you drain it all out of as well. On the early ones, didn't have a dipstick up here. They just have it down here, so that's cool. Runs on unleaded fuel, <coughs> no problems. Uh, it all looks original. Even the handlebars, uh, handle grips look original too. That's good. Um, so yeah, do you know what? It's, it's all complete. <coughs> Lovely little bed. Bed knife is down in here. There's your bed knife and there's your cylinder as well. And there's still plenty of meat on that old cylinder. So I could I could get it sharpened up as well. We'll see how we get on. Um, but all in all, it's, it's all there. Now, it's a really weird mower. Uh, as I say, this, this is a um, a paddock mower. So it, it would have been would have been used um, to, to, to cut like horse paddocks and little fields or, or just rough cut gardens. If you've got like a, like a little rough cottage style garden at the back of your house, you would use this sort, sort of mower because um, it's not designed for, for really, really flat lawns, which your, your typical cylinder mower is. It's a 19 inch cut on the on the front here as well. As I say, no roller at the front because it want, it's rough cutting. So it will, it will only uh, roll the grass once you've actually um, dispensed the grass out the back. Now it is missing, which many of these are, um, the, the grass box. So you've got a little tiny hook just here and one on the other side. And the idea is, is you have a, a bar that goes across and then the box comes out to about here. Um, and it goes up and then back down in like a triangle. So it's only got one, two, three, four sides. It's an open box or bag. Um, and then it has a wire that is suspended up the top here, uh, which holds the box up in the air. So you can actually buy them. Husqvarna do one, a black one. Um, but do I want to put like a brand new bag on there? I don't really know. We might, I might just try and make one up and maybe get some uh, some old canvas or something like that to put on the back might be good. So um, I might have a job for my seamstress and also uh, a little tiny welding job just to uh, to make a box up. It would be nice to make a box up for this. Um, but all the points have been done. I'll say all the points, there's one set of points in there. The points have all been cleaned inside inside the um, the flywheel. And also the condenser's been changed. Brand new condenser on next to the condenser was duff. The core's been checked. And also it's got a second-hand flywheel on here because the flywheel was actually cracked. So we actually put a brand new or second-hand donor flywheel on here as well. So do you know what? For what it is, 75 sort of CC Mark II. He's done a lot of work in it already, and that's why I paid the money. I paid the money because he'd done he'd done the work already. So if I've had to put a another flywheel on here, a new condenser on here, a new spark plug, an all change, uh, all that stuff, you know, you're talking sort of 70, 80 quid <coughs> into a machine. Um, but I saw it on a video, and I and when it came up for sale, I thought, Do you know what, he's the work's already done. <coughs> so all I've got to do. Um, in another video will be take this all apart sand it all down and then um, look to uh, to either spray it in uh, in its proper colors or powder coat it if I can powder coat it up it look really nice powder coated um, and then uh, and then go from there so my only concern is 
is to do these wheel trims, I'd have to take these rubbers off. Now, I'm not, I, I think they do come off. Uh, yeah, they do come off, yeah. So I might be able to get away with that. Take them rubbers off, because that would look absolutely the nuts in powder-coated um, orange, Suffolk orange, with all that corporate stuff hanging out. That would look absolutely spanking, so... There you go, quick little walk around the Suffolk Corporation Mark II. Let me know if, you, if you're across the water in the pond, um, what type of mowers you have over there in, in this sort of setup. Um, if anyone does have a bag or a pattern for a bag, give us a shout, that'd be cool as well. So let's take it outside. It's not the lightest machine in the world. For what it is, it is actually quite heavy. Let's take it outside. We'll give it a little tiny fire up. Have a little, have a little mow of it. My grass is too long, uh, too short for it. But um, either way, we we'll just have a little drive of it. And I think, I think he put quite a fair old good helping of petrol in there too. Yeah, he did nearly, nearly three quarters of a tank. So he actually gave me about eight pound, or eight pound of fuel as well. So super happy with that. Um, but all in all, it's an absolutely lovely little machine. It got, it's got all the, all the brass plaque on there as well which, which just gives it the age as well so that'd be that'd be taken off if i powder coat it all up you can just just pop it out pop that out and uh, just give it a little tiny clean a bit of lacquer on top that'll look absolutely lush so there you go just a little bit of something different for you uh suffolk corporation um which is also the same as a squire mower or the real mo and i know there were other other makes of these type of mowers that went went abroad and uh, you know that existed abroad so if you've got anything that is very, very similar, send me some um, some comments about it and also some emails, send me some photographs of what, of what you've got, um, especially if they're restored. I like my machines restored, as we all know. I don't like I don't like this oily rag look to me. It just I just it just doesn't float my boat. I prefer it looking absolutely lush. Um, let's get it outside. Um, we'll try and fire it up. It should run, because I have seen it running, and then hopefully we'll give it a little tiny mow and see how she goes. Right, now the grass is still very, very wet. It's still quite early in the morning, to be fair. So let's wake the old neighbours up. So here it is, a little corporation. And all we've got to do to uh, fire the old girl up and bring her back to life is turn the fuel tap on, which should be all the way down. Once that's on, little tiny air, air bubble here, you've then just got to lift the line up slightly, just give it a little tiny twiddle as we call it, a little, little tiny tweak, that'll flood the carby, it's got a brand new gasket on it too as well, just in that, so just keep flooding that carby, get rid of that little air bubble, that'll soon disappear, that's gone now, so now we're getting fuel down through, and that'll just flood up nice, and there's a, there's a little tiny wheat pole at the back here, which will uh, tell you when, it, when your carb is full up. There it goes, that's full now. There you go, let me just show you that. Just, otherwise you'll just say, oh Mick, you didn't show all the detail. I'll go, I'll show you. You've only got to ask guys, I'll show you. So just in here, you've got a little tiny, little tiny flood. Uh, tw we'll call it a twiddler, tickler, just there. And there's a little tiny hole just here, uh, and that will then weep out of there and flood your carby, okay? So once you've done that, you're ready to fire it. Now it should start up because as I say, I have, I have seen it running. <coughs> Let's uh, just fire the old girl up. A little bit of throttle, not too much because it shoots straight off without you. I'll put it onto full choke. Get more throttle. Let's turn that choke off. Pull core's a bit stucky, but a bit of oil. So there you go. So, in idle, uh, the mower just stands still, okay? But the second you give it a bit more beans, then the uh, the front wheels are cutting off the front wheels. It's only got, it's only got two wheels. But the wheels, the wheels are cutting. So that was me, it just, just flipped, flipped too much. So, by tipping it back, there's no, because there's no resistance, it, it will go on its own, okay? But when you flick it forward, both wheels drive, and the cylinder cuts in. How cool is that? Let's have a little walk with it. Get a bit of beans.
when you get to the end of your length, you just squeeze that throttle down, turn it round, hit a throttle. It's not the easiest thing to do when it whilst you're recording. Spin it round on a sixpence. Back round, open the throttle up. So let me just uh, put you guys on a tripod, and I can handle it much better uh, with two hands because you, you have to adjust the throttle as you're uh, as you're cutting when you come to the end of your length. Otherwise, uh, you end up going up, up, up a garden wall. So let me just put you up here. And my grass is really, really wet, so it's probably not, not the best day to be doing this. Let's come over here a bit of it as well. I'll go down that side down there with it. Let's go and grab it. Give it some beans. When you get to the bottom at the end, you just, just kill the throttle and then you just turn the machine round on a six pinch, you see. Really, really easy to use. And away we go. Decrease the throttle, spin it round. Open the revs up again. Bring it into there. It's actually a pleasure to use. Throttle down, spin it round on a sixpence. Throttle again. What an absolute little joy to use. You can just spin it around on full throttle. It's not advised to do all the drive, you see. So just turn it down a bit. Look at that. How cool is that? And it's already laying some 1960s stripes in the lawn. Look, look at that. Lovely. Absolutely beautiful little machine. I'm really, really fond of it. <clears throat> so it's not designed to cut. It's not designed to cut in the wet. Definitely not. But self-propelled 1960s bit of kit. What more can you say? All original. Little tiny vintage machine. Suffolk Corporation Iron Foundry Iron Horse. Absolutely beautiful. And that little tiny original exhaust just, just makes it pop. Absolutely popping. I love it. If I get a grass bag for it, I'll be even happier or have to make one because you're going to be getting wet feet. It's not it's not something to be cutting grass with, with uh, your, your safety sliders on. Um, what do you think? Should I do a full restoration? Get it sprayed or powder coated? The paintwork is really, really good to be fair. But if I touch it, just like do the fuel tank, it's going to make the, the, the rest look worse. So I'm thinking about restoring it. What do you guys and girls think? Let me know. So there you go. Lovely little Suffolk Corporation uh, Lawnmower Mark II, um, which I bought off my good friend, Lawnmower Jones. Go and check out his YouTube channel and do yourself a favour. If you're into vintage lawnmowers, then he's your man. I'm telling you, he's much better than me, hands down. So that's cool. Um, that lawnmower, I think, will be, go forward for restoration. Let me know what you think I should do with it. Should I just leave it as it is? Just make a grass box um, and then leave it as it is for a little while and just store it away and just fire it up every now and again? Or should I strip it, take it apart and uh, fully restore it? I already have my Atco kickstart to finish off and I've got to do my Atco standard at some point. I want to a bit more work here as well. Um, but I'm still waiting for a, a, another lift. Now these lift tables have gone up so much, it's not even funny. So if anyone does have or would like to sell or knows where there is a cheap, I'd say half ton lift um, lift table, a hydraulic one, just one you pump up and down, or as, as it's more commonly known, the Pender lift. If anyone's got one or knows where one is, or if, if you found one on eBay, send me a link via my email address. 
and uh, if it's near me, I can go and pick it up um, because what I want to be doing is having my bread and butter machines here and my long-term uh, projects down there. That way I can then work between the two as when the work settles down here, I can go, get on with my long-term projects that side. And it just frees up a bit more space, a bit more time. I don't want to put my ACO standards on here, stripping it all the way down and then have to bring a, bring another lawnmower in just for a carburetor cleaning and a blade sharpener and bad. I don't want to be doing that. So if you know where lift table, give me a shout. If that's sort of video of Mixed Mowers and Mower Man, then hit the subscribe button and whack the old bell. Set your notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video and it's completely free to subscribe. So hit that little tiny button there and you'll get more videos as and when I upload them. I look forward to seeing this episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon, but until then, much more importantly, take it easy.